All right, so here's the first part of my distribution box, which is gonna house the controller. So I have two 12 volt power supplies, but I think they're 360 watts each. Two main power cables coming in. And then I have these two five volt power supplies that are gonna come in here. And they're gonna to connect to the relays and the dig quads. So I'm gonna put, be putting the dig quads, one here and one here, the two relays right here. And then here, I'm gonna put eight boosters, two, each one for each channel. And then two cables are gonna go through each one of these holes going out. I also have 60 millimeter fans. There's two there, there's one back there. It's got a little room, but it's between the two. So it'll evacuate any um, hot air that might be between the power supplies. And then I have one here and one here. I have to wire these all up. They're all gonna wire to one of the three 12 volt um, connections on one of the power supplies. The other 12 volt connection, so I'm gonna have two connections off of one power supply going to one dig quad, and then two um, 12 volt connections going to the other. So there would be two 12 volts on each power supply. Each dig quad and their and his, its respective four channels have to all come from the same power supply. So if I run a um, power injection, I have to make sure that if I inject to any of the channels on the dig quad that that power injection comes from the same power supply. So you have to make sure you do that. So the next is to add some more components. All right, so I am about halfway done building this controller distribution box. I'll give you an idea of what I've got. So this, This, power supply one, power supply two. Now what I have is, got them plugged in right now. These are five volt, like, uh, phone chargers. They have a little barrel connector on the end. And all I've done is, let me see where they're at. Is I took these and took the female and you're able to wire positive and ground to it. And what that does is that applies five volts to these relays. These, these relays right here, these two. So what this does is this allows me to uh, not have very much power going through when I'm not when it's not on, when I'm not using it. I can just shut it off and it maintains power. You can see there's a LED light on the dig quads on each one. And um, I, you can access it, do whatever you need to with it, but it won't apply power to the actual LEDs because that comes from the two power supplies. So what happens is that, that five volts comes in and goes to this side. Uh, you split it off. You, you do two power positives and two grounds. One goes to the relay and one goes to the five volt, external five volt positive and uh, negative on the dig quad. Then there's a connection that goes from the, uh, what's it called, a uh, Q1R. That's the signal from the relay to turn on, to trip the relay uh, and turn on uh, the 120 volts that go to the power supplies. So right now they're in an off state and if I log in to WLED, the software, 
and which I'll show you in a minute, and I hit the power connector, uh, or hit the power button, it will trip the relay to come on because then the relay will see a five volt input and then that will trigger the relay to turn on 120 volts to the power supply. So I don't know, I'm trying to see if I can do this. Hold on one second. All right, so now, here I have up on my laptop, I have WLED and I'm logged into my home one which is power supply one. If I come up here and I click power, you hear that relay trip? Now you see that relay is on, the one on the left, that's number one, and power supply number one is on. Now I have 12 volts going to dig quad number one. Um, the only thing I don't see is the dig quad doesn't have anything that there's, you know, 12 volts going to it. But once I hook up the, um, what do you call them, the boosters, which are all going to go in this empty spot right here. I'm going to put eight of them in, one for each channel. And um, you see my Wi-Fi antennas. Got those wiring in. Um, then I'll be able to make sure I got 12 volts going in. But if I go over here and I change to... home two, which is the other one and hit it. Now you can hear the case fans come on because they're wired into power supply two. So this is a way of saving on power when it's not in use. I mean, if I don't want to run lights, I can go into my app, turn it off. And all I'm using is these are little five volt, two amp power supplies. I think they only use like a quarter amp each very low power so now i got to do all my boosters put all those into the distribution box and wire them to come out here and i got some quick connects that are going to go on the outside of here that i'll be able to wire the leds to and uh, won't have to go into the box so that's the next part well let me turn this off so you can come in here and just turn this off and you can see power supply two shuts down. Change to LED one. And that one shuts off. Everything's working as planned so far. Next phase are the boosters. That's these eight, one for each channel. We have four channels off of this dig quad and four channels off of this one. So what I gotta do now um, is I'm waiting on some three wire cabling that I'm gonna come from each one of these and then I'm gonna run a quick connect that will be on the outside uh, to run the actual wire to each one. So we'll do that next. All right, so here's the finished product. Um, so we have our eight power boosters and I've wired them into quick connects. So, Here's a, an example of a wire that once I start setting up my first string, that will be ran up through the ceiling, through the garage. And then here's these, these are the eight channels with the uh, Wi-Fi antennas behind them. And uh, that should be good once I power this up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put together strings, 50 lights at a time, power it up, and then add a string until I start seeing uh, the amperage get to the point where uh, 
I'm going to start seeing an effect on the lights. The more lights you add, once you start running out of power, they'll start to uh, flicker and, and not cooperate and not ap operate properly. So that's the next part. So I'm going to end this video, this part of this series on doing these uh, addressable LEDs. And the next series is going to be uh, installing them on the house. First, of course, powering up and testing how many strings I can put on one channel on the dig quad without having to do a power injection. And then start installing it on the house. So if you enjoy, um, I'll add a link to the boosters and these quick connects. Um, they're just run through these uh, wire, wire nuts that are on the side of the cabinet a, a distribution panel. But um, I'll put the link to those in there. I think I have the link to everything else. Um, I do want to hold, I do want to also mention about a few things that I've been using. Um, the first thing is to wire these, to connect these uh, wires to, to the different, like these, these connectors right here. I've used these, uh, what do they call them? This is the set I bought. I bought this off of Amazon. It's got 1,200 of them on them. I guess they call them, I can't remember what kind of connectors they call these. Um, feral connectors or something like that. But they allow you to put the wire in and then you have a, a crimper that looks like this. Uh, let's see, where are you? I don't know, I have it somewhere. Got enough junk in here. Look at this. Here's the connect. This is the crimper. And you just stick the end in, crimp it down. And then you can put it in one of the terminal ends there and then tighten it down and that locks it into place. That's what I use for that. That, all of these. This is just a um, forked, you know, like a fork blade connector. Get this closed. These here, got these off of Amazon. I mean, they're cheap. You can get a whole pack. This 150 was, I think it was less than five bucks. But these have heat shrink uh, ends on them so that you can go ahead and heat them up and shrink them down to the wires. That's what I got. That's what I use for all these. And um, I also used, uh, well, I also have the spade, what do you call them, fork or spade tips connectors that have a male and female. So if you need to, connect or disconnect. I was going to go with those on the ends, but then I decided to go with these three wire disconnects. That's why on these jumpers, if you look, or I mean on these boosters, there's a little switch right there. Let's see if I can get the light right. And that's for a 249 ohm resistor or a 33 ohm resistor. If you run these boosters with where the power ground and data power and ground and one one side data on the other separate two separate sets of wires then you would go with the 249 ohm resistor if you're running them three wires together in one sheet in one sleeve as one wire then you want to run the 33 ohm and that's what i'm doing here since i'm running these Quick connects, they're three, three wire, all in one wire. And uh, so I've got them all set to 33 ohms. So that's the next thing is to power it up and um, test 
each strip of light. So I ordered the lights. I only have one strip. That's what I have right over there. That was just to test and see what was going on and how they worked and how much uh, power one strip draws. And so now I ordered 10, actually 20 sets of lights for a total of a thousand. I'm eventually gonna need about 2,500 bulbs, between 2,500 and 3,000. So I went ahead and ordered a thousand. I got them off of AliExpress, which is a direct distributor to China. And I think it was about 200 and, 280 bucks shipped for a thousand uh, bulbs or 20 sets of 50. All right, so like I said, leave any comments, any questions, give me a holler, give me a follow. I'll talk to you later.